Okay, in this video here, I just want to talk about some basic um, considerations from a structural and architectural perspective when it comes to balconies in, um, in, in concrete superstructure apartment buildings or condo buildings. Um, so what we're seeing here in the picture here is, you know, I, I didn't see this building later, but obviously to me, it looks like this is going to be a balcony here. That's going to be a balcony there. That's going to be a balcony there. And that's going to be a balcony there. And the exterior wall is going to be uh, it's, you know, kind of flush with the edge of the floor plate there, probably in some manner. So let's just uh, sketch a section through, you know, a, a typical balcony um, condition, maybe right here and just take a look at what we're what we're looking at here. OK, and so what I've sketched here is, is a, you know, a standard condition that you'd, you'd find um, quite a bit around around these parts of how these are, are built. So here's the concrete. Um, slab okay for the balcony right there i've just drawn um the blue there is the exterior wall assembly so you know it could be it could be a solid wall or it could be a, a window wall system or something like that and this is just a column in the background okay, and the column you know they're they're often rectangles but they could be circular as well and then i just labeled that yeah this is indoors so this would be a condo unit here so suite right here suite right here and the balcony of that suite and then you know i cut it off but the balcony of the suite below or whatever so this is the basic structural um, configuration of, of this, basically. So, you know, obviously one big problem is, you know, the concrete's going from inside to outside. So even from your heated space to your unheated space. So, you know, that, that should be dealt with. And there is products out there, um, balcony thermal breaks that you can get to deal with that situation. Don't see them around here used much, but um, I understand they're used quite, quite uh, widely in, in Europe. And at some point, I'm sure they'll make their way here as well. And so here, here's an example of um, that, that system right here. And basically, you know, here's a balcony slab out here and here's the interior slab. It's, it's just a insulated box basically with some stainless steel rebar running through it that can be placed at the balconies, so, you know, in section. That's kind of what it looks like right there. So, you know, pretty straightforward thing. So, you know, your insulation plane here is um, obviously the glass and the frame right there. And now it goes through that uh, isocorp and you know, through the glazing and whatever you got going on below as well. And so there you see the, the uh, stainless steel rebar. And this would be the balcony here and the interior slab there. So a really good product um, to explore. Okay, so I've drawn that in there in the in the pink here. And, you know, of course, you just you would want to make sure that the insulation plane of that product aligned with the insula insulation plane of, of whatever wall system you're using, whether it's outside insulated or cavity insulated or um, glazing, whatever it is. So just make sure they align is, is kind of the key there. Now, something else you want to consider here is, um, you know, you're going to want to slope on the balcony. It's going to have to drain somewhere. Typically, you know, if there's, if there's nothing below of concern, um, you know, or if it's a covered balcony, so there's another balcony above it. Uh, usually that just is just slope concrete off to the end and just goes off the end. But, you know, if you had a terrace below where people are going to be lounging in chairs or, or um, you know, you didn't have another balcony above kind of protecting this space, then you might want to make other considerations to drainage and take, um, you know, slope it to a, a, a a roof drain, I guess I'll call it, but a floor drain in the balcony slab. So that's, you know, that's something you want to think about, about what, you know, what approach makes sense. And, and you know, just remember, like, obviously the, the, the um, you know, doing a roof drain or a floor drain on the balcony is, is obviously a better approach um, all around, regardless of whether there's a, um, a balcony above or, or whatever, but that has a cost uh, and, and it could be a significant cost, you know, if you if you have a large building with a whole bunch of balconies. So you just got to be realistic in, in those kind of decisions. Something else that might just might drive that decision or whether you slope, you know, into a, a drain would be um, if there's a hose bib out here. Like if there's a if there's a hose bib out here, so this person on the balcony could water plants and stuff like that. And, and there's a terrace, like I said, below, like maybe there's a, a space below where somebody could be down here on a roof terrace or whatever on a sidewalk then you know and water could be poured off there quite substantially then you probably want to want to deal with that as an example with roof drains and then of course the, the bad side of that is too if you did a roof drain don't forget you have a pipe coming down and the pipe's gonna go somewhere okay so um you know it, let's just assume you had a pipe it came down and went back in in somewhere in a wall or something like that if you're on the balcony below looking up you're going to see that 
PVC pipe and it's not going to be very nice. So now all of a sudden you're into a situation where it's like, well, maybe I need to do some type of a soffit right there. You know, which again just demonstrates how much, you know, the cost can start to, to really um, add up just from making a simple decision like that. So anyways, let's just keep it simple and let's just say we're going to slope this balcony out. Okay, so um, the the engineer in some cases, you know, depending on the thickness of your of your slab here, um, you could taper this out for sure. Um, uh, let's just do it like this. So you could taper it like that, um, you know, and just get a slope through the structure. But you just you have to talk to your engineer because I've ran into issues where you know there's a certain slab depth required, and let's just say it's 200. Um, that still needs to be 200. They they get pretty. Uh, from my experience, it, it's not that easy just to shave say 50 millimeters off of that, and and have it 150 out here. So it's just a conversation that has to has to happen. Um, it's not always possible. So let's just assume that we can't do that. We've done a 200 slab, and we need that 200 slab. And of course, all it's going to be driven by how far you cantilevering that slab out as well. And that's going to that's going to impact things as well. So another thing um, you could do is add a add the concrete on top okay so you, you taper it like that I'll, I'll draw it like that um, that that's an option as well so now you've added you didn't you didn't take away from the structural and you know structural integrity of the of the thickness of that and you've done it that way but you can see um, there's a bit of an issue right here so you're going to want to think about well, what am I going to do right there and so what's you know normally done is um, well, I'll just draw it like that. That's not that's not what is normally done. Um, usually, there's a curb put in right here. Okay, so there'd be a, a concrete curb raised at a height, maybe like that. Okay. So there's my curb in there. Um, you know, and, and this serves another purpose too. Like if you if you had a window or even a wall for that matter, but if you had a window um, sitting, you know, right on right on the slab, say right there. You know we get snow and, and stuff and wind driven rains and things like that so you know the curb helps create a a good um, barrier of um, wind driven rain getting in and you know when you have snow piling up on your balcony or something like that so so the curb's a good idea and it's widely done but you can see we have an issue there now with with our balcony thermal break so you know um you, you just have to rethink where that goes and maybe maybe even the insulation strategy on the building in this case so you know I, 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 let's just assume we have outside insulation now in this building okay so there's our insulation and there's our insulation and now that um you know that that thermal break product could be positioned something more like that i guess it'd be like that so anyways you know something something you got to think about when you get into the detail of that and one thing leads to another in architecture. So now you've got a situation of, um, you know, you're inside and you want to go to your balcony. You're stepping up and over a curb. Pretty normal um, situation. Do you want that? You got to ask what, yourself whether you want that. And if you do, how? What's acceptable for the height of that curb, right? And maybe you base that off of the height of a riser that's allowed, say, in a house in the building code. Um, should you, you know, that's a comfortable riser. Should it be more than that? Maybe not. Um, so, so you want to think about that. And let's just say, you know, you talk to your client or whatever, you're the designer, and they're like, I don't like the step over. That reminds me of like a 1970s, you know, basic apartment building. Um, you know, can we just maybe, can we do a flush transition or can we maybe just step up onto something rather than step over something, step onto something? So, you know, both those options do exist, but they have impacts. So let's just say you're going to, because I have this drawn right now, let's look at the step. We don't like the step over, so we're going to step up on to something. So um, at that point, you might say, okay, well, I'm going to do a nice uh the non-combustible decking so like a trex decking that's non-combustible or something like that so let's just say it's that okay or whatever you put pavers on pedestals whatever it is um, the point is you've now added this and you're stepping up onto something which is kind of nice but now you got a problem down here as well right so um, you got to think about how's that the guardrail gonna um, how's that gonna interact with whatever finish you've done on the surface there 
And now all of a sudden that means, okay, maybe I need to, um, you know, so when I'm standing outside looking up at the building, I don't want to see the unfinished edge of of the wood. You know, there's there's lots of solutions one can come up with, but maybe maybe you just do an up, upstand concrete, like whatever. You, you just have to think about, you know, how what is the detail going to be there? How's that going to work? And then, of course, you're going to have your guardrail as well, uh, which could be mounted to the top, could be mounted to the face of this thing. It could be mounted on the inside of a curb. Like, again, more options to look at there of, of what you want to see. Okay, so let's look at one last scenario. So the client say it doesn't like you don't or you or the client whoever doesn't like the step over condition, and then they don't like the step up onto something condition, and they say no, no, I want a flush turn, flush surface, um, or maybe it's accessible housing situation, um, you know where people in wheelchairs could be living in there. And you just don't want to have these steps or or whatever. So. Um, what are the options there? So obviously you could look at um, a ramp situation on the inside, right? So, I mean, that you could ramp, you want to have a landing to ramp up somehow, but that's going to take up a lot of space. But certainly that is something that could be explored. Um, think of this too, if you're working on say a, let, let's just say this is a, uh, a roof terrace out here. Okay, so let's just say that the, the interior wall um, here is actually sitting here. Okay, well now that insulation plane needs to be like that. Okay, and um, you you probably are you know by the time you put in the amount of required insulation right there and your your finished decking and your slope and all this stuff, um, you you certainly are going to have some type of a step up, um, right? Because you're not going to have the insulation and all that stuff on the inside. So unless you're doing a pretty substantial raised floor system inside. Um, you're going to have a, a step up situation where you might need ramps and things like that. So, so you know, it's a, 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 another condition that exists a lot is these um, we call them terrace conditions when there when there's a, when there's a um, living you know, interior space below rather than a balcony. It's it's a terrace. So a balcony is completely outside, above and below. But a terrace would be um, have interior um, space below it, basically, which means you're going to need insulation. Now I'm not going to solve the the um, the detail for anybody, um, you know, but just just I'm just trying to make people aware of some of the considerations you need to think about um, if if you're doing that route, and then yeah, you got to think about the installation plane, and that's what's going to be happening there. Okay, so um, so yeah, back to where we were. Um, so the owner says, yeah, I don't like the step over, I don't like the step up. I need a flush transition out to my balcony. I don't have room to do a ramp on the inside. I hate that idea. What other options exist? Um, so there, there is the option of stepping this concrete slab. So I'll just sketch that out here. Now in its, in its basic form, you know, it could be as simple as, as this if you needed that flush transition. So there's your exterior wall and here's the balcony and here's the interior floor. And um, you, you could just forego the curb, I suppose, right there. Um, but, but, you know, again, I've talked about some of the risks of that, um, you know, wouldn't be the, the best scenario, but certainly it's not, not impossible to do. And if it's a covered patio, then, you know, maybe it's not the end of the world. And, and really, it, it depends on, how, you know, how you're finishing this balcony as well is always, always um, something to think about as well. But, you know, um, this, what you could do is step the slab and, and maybe it just be, becomes a choice of, well, I'm going to oversize the slab here a little bit so that I get the minimum structural requirement in the slab down here. And there's a little bit, wee bit of a step in the slab right there, uh, which would, you know, I guess, again, you have to think about what finishes you're going to put outside. But if you had a tile finish, you'd want to put um, a drain, drain type map below the tile. But then, you know, the either a drain mat or put on some pedestals. So, you know, there'd be some, you'd have to determine what, what that dimension is right there based on your finishes on the outside. Um, you know, and again, it could be as simple as um, like a, a pavers on pedestals. Um, tiles can be on pedestals. So here's an example of a, of terrace, a terrace here that was actually in a, in a, in a barrier-free facility. Um, you know, so they, they obviously did a curb here and raised their glaze enough. So I guess that's another option too. Like you could do the curb, but just where the door is, you just, you just forego the curb and buck it out basically. Um, you know, that's certainly something that be, would, could be considered as well as to say there's a door there, then you would just drop that curb like that at the door, right? So people can get in and out. But anyways, the, the point of showing this picture is, um, you know, on this balcony right here, it's, it's a tiled system of some sort. 
and the water is designed to um, to drain through the cracks here. Like this is perfectly flat. There's no floor drains on this tile. So if the tile's flat, the, the water goes through the cracks here, okay, which I can show a picture of. And then there's a sloped, um, either sloped insulation or sloped surface below. It could be the concrete sloped, but it could be also sloped insulation. Um, two drains underneath. And so there you can see that a little bit there, um, how they didn't they didn't actually grow between the tiles here, so that drainage could happen. This is a covered area too, so it wouldn't have an enormous amount of, of water on it, but um, actually you can see it's wet though. <laughs> it did rain when I was there, so there you go. There are products like uh, Ditramat and stuff. Like I know Schluter's got some some systems where um, you could get a you know a, a quite a thin um, you know drainage system below the tile basically under here so you know it's anyways again just look at what you're planning to do on the outside that has a big impact of what happens right here let's look at a more extreme scenario um, of a similar condition though and so here's a situation where um, we, I've decided that yeah I as the designer or the owner or whatever he wants say a um, you know a, a wood deck type feel on the outside or or a tiled system or whatever so you know again this could be pavers on pedestals or let's just let's just say it's pavers on pedestals let's just say we had pavers here sitting on you know just um height adjustable pedestals basically like so very common on on rooftop terraces and things like that so anyways the point is there, there's some surface out here that's got some substantial um depth to it right there so it doesn't really matter what, what it is, but you know, it could be many products. So um, let's just say we have that. I'll just draw the, the decking scenario because that's a little bit a little bit easier. And um, what you could do here is um, drop the slab. Okay, so what we're doing here is dropping the structure like so. So it can be done. Um, again, you have to just look at what is the assembly out there and then figure out what do I need that drop to be. And and the same can apply for a terrace. Okay, so if if the uh, if this wall was over here, and this was inside right here, uh, and you had to run your insulation plane, you know, down around like this, um, then obviously you're going to want some sort of step there, okay, to get this this flush transition out there. So all I would say structurally, without being a structural engineer, just just been being through this before, what I would say is, you know, you you have a slab thickness required right there. Let's just say it's 200 again. That's a that's a very common thickness if you have like a six meter by six meter grid in a flat plate system. Um, if you get beyond six meters, you're probably looking at 225 slab, 250 slab, and so on and so forth, depending how far you go. And so the engineer would still want to say that 200 right there. Let's say in this case. So, um, you know, I still done a slope here to that way. And again, you'd have to deal with, well, how am I gonna finish this off on the end right there? We won't, we'll, I won't get into that again. But what I was gonna just mention here is this is possible to do, but what will happen is where the step happens, unfortunately, the slab doesn't just do that usually. Okay, that's not what happens um, from my experience. The 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 I guess the overlap of the two slabs that that's going to be at least um, one meter probably something like that so assume about a one meter in your design for that and so you know what does that mean well that means um, you've got this bulkhead now in your in your unit right you got this drop in your unit right there and um, you know what impacts does that have well I don't know like do you have a ceiling if you don't, then you see that. Um, if you do have a ceiling, let's just say we've got a ceiling. You're like, oh, it's okay. No, I got a ceiling right here. There's my ceiling. I'll do it in blue. Right? The rest of my assemblies. There's my ceiling. Oh yeah, that's perfect. But is it? Because don't forget, over here you're going to have a washroom. You're going to have a possibly a dryer. You're going to have uh, a kitchen hood fan. You have all these things in your space over here that um, need to be vented out. So that's the next thing I want to get to here. And a lot of times, not always, there's other solutions to this, but um, a lot of times those those um, exhaust ducts go through the ceiling and out the wall right here. Well, you got a bit of a problem right there. So that's one option that happens with those ducts. I'm going to show a couple of pictures of, of two scenarios. So one, it's in a ceiling. 
Okay, so you'd have to drop your ceiling even more in this case, if that was going to be the approach. And now those um, those exhaust ducts could go out right here, and you'd have a, a grill right there for them to exhaust out. But you'd want need to make sure you have enough clearance right there for some ducts. And now you've just lost oops, ceiling height, right? in your space and it starts to affect your floor to floor heights and all this kind of stuff you know what has it been marketed as eight foot ceilings nine foot ceilings what and you start to run into problems there um, another approach for um, ducting the washroom dryer and um, hood fan exhaust is going through the slab okay so you can put the ducts through the slab but when you do this you got a bit of a problem there Okay, so if we go back to the previous sketch that I did, so back to this one here, I'll just, uh, well, I'll leave it there, the isocorb balcony thermal break, but you know, your, your ducts basically, I'll do it in red here, um, they can actually go in the slab and they could go out the face of the, of the balcony, I suppose, uh, but more commonly where those things uh, vent is out the soffit of the balcony. Okay, so let's take a look at a couple of conditions here. Actually, before we look at those conditions, you know, you can see that works well when you have this slab like that, but when you step the slab, it starts to get a little bit uh, um, complex. And the reason I say it gets complex is because if you were ducting that stuff through the slab, now the duct's got to do this. Is it possible? I'm not sure. I've never gone through that. Um, I'd have to ask a mechanical person, but I'm guessing that's not good. There's a lot of rebar and stuff happening in there. That's the whole reason you need this this bulk there. It's essentially like a beam. Um, and you'd have a pretty hard time, I think, getting in slab ducts through that situation. So you'd probably be looking at going that way. So, you know, so this is a big decision because it'll have an impact on your, of doing a step, step slab and a finished surface out here, because this is really going to start to impact your ceiling heights and your floor to, your floor, to floor heights. So just to show a couple of scenarios here. So this is a building here where there's no in slab ducts. Okay, so they've they've vented the washroom, hood fan, and dryer um, in the ceiling space, and you can see right here. So there's there's the balcony, okay, and you can see a vent there, vent there, and vent there, and it's below the floor plate. So it's in the ceiling. So there's a bulkhead in the unit that takes uh, each one of those exhausts to the exterior and and why you see three of them is probably because of that washroom hood fan and dryer probably is what it is um, so that's an example of where they didn't um, vent through the balcony and so here's an example of um, the approach of of venting in the slab okay so that that would be an exhaust for for one of those things that being exhaust for one of those things there's probably one around the corner you can see over here there's some good ones actually. So there's three. Uh, kind of lost it now. There we go. Three. Washroom, dryer, um, and hood fan for the kitchen. And you know, and the hood fan one can't be over a certain CFM. Like it has to be like your, I think it's 300 CFM to get that because it's a very skinny flat duct that goes in, goes in the slab. So if you if you if you have like a 600 CFM fan, you're probably gonna have to do a bulkhead and go out the underneath the floor in a, in a ceiling bulkhead. So um, anyways, some major considerations to consider. Um, and so here's a picture of a building getting built, concrete building. So there's your balconies. And you can see the in-slab ducts going in right here. So they've got the, the bottom formwork in for, the, for the, the, the flat plate they'd be doing on this building. And now they, the silver there you see is the ducts and, uh, that they're putting in there. And then they're going to put the rebar in and all that stuff and uh, pour concrete basically, and those will get buried in the concrete and they will vent outside the, um, the soffits of the balconies or the, or the face of the building. Actually, you can see one right there. Um, so in this case right here, actually, we can probably line this up pretty nicely. Hold on a sec. Yeah, I, I can see, I can see a duck coming out of the slab right there and right there. It's probably that one and that one on each floor, right? And so rather than going out the, the underside of the balcony, they've done it. At, you know where the where the wall will be so the facade you know probably probably in that building it's a um well who knows it could be anything but there'd be a, there'd be a, a, a vent there basically 
um, in the facade to accommodate that. And there's just a, a closer shot of, um, of that ductwork right there. So that's your in-slab ducting. Um, probably that's a nice way to go. There's limitations to that. There got to be certain distances from columns and all this kind of stuff. So it's not always an easy thing to coordinate, but um, it's certainly doable and quite popular. And so here's a good example of a building where they've they vented out the front of the slab. Um, it looks like they've gone out the balcony too in some conditions, you know. So maybe I don't know the floor plan of this, but maybe one's drier, one's um, washroom and one's uh, kitchen hood fan, like whatever. And anyway, point point is two or two are going out the bottom of the balcony, one's going out the face of the slab right there. And then what you know, and actually that's what this is as well. I think right there, there's actually a vent coming out right there. In those locations, there's actually some quite discreet ones you can get with window wall systems. Um, another thing to be aware of if you do fireplaces, that's what you end up with right there. Okay, those are not going to go in the slab. They're they're quite large. Um, the exhausting for the the flue for the fireplaces, gas fireplaces, anyways, is what I'm talking about. Woods a whole other and a whole other story. And if it's electric, you wouldn't have to worry about it. But but if you have a gas fireplace, which is most common, that that's what you end up with is that right there. And finally, just to show some more discrete vents uh, right there. So this is a window wall system on this building, and there is a vent coming out there, and a vent coming out there, and it looks to me like it's coming out the face of the slab. Those vents, uh, based on the height that it's at right there. But but you know certainly those vents could be, they could have been right there as well. Right, you just lower that mullion, take that panel finish down, and then still have that discrete kind of panel there. It's visible, but it's discrete. Um, and it looks to me like they have vented one of the items out the underside of the balcony there as well. And so, what's driving that decision not to put three of them under the balcony? Again, it, it's it's proximity to each other. Like the ducts can't be too close together because they're they're you know they're taking up concrete and rebar space, right? So they got to be a certain distance apart, and they got to be certain distances from columns and things like this. So there's a bunch of considerations made structurally for them, and so probably they just couldn't get them all to that location. That's that was the solution right there. So, anyways, that's kind of summarizes what I, what I wanted to cover with um, <laughs> balconies in uh, condo buildings it's it's there's a lot of consideration there to make and so I just wanted to um, you know share some of the thought processes and considerations one should be making when they're working on uh, that type of building so just to finish this off we'll look, take a look at a couple of um, mechanical drawings here so here's an example of um, you know th these items we just looked at here so this is a suite uh, and here's an exhaust fan right here in a bathroom. So there's the toilet and the sinks. And so in this case here, the exhaust is going out this way and this way and out that way right there. And here's the washer and dryer. So the dryer vent is coming out right there. And here's the, um, the uh, exhaust for the range. So the hood fan. So there's those three items right there. Um, and in this case, um, all that stuff is not in the slab, okay? So it's not dashed. If it was dashed, that would kind of indicate that it's in the slab, but it's it's all solid, solidly drawn. And you can see right here, actually, too, that the, um, you know, the, this line here basically is, is from the ceiling plan. So if I just highlight that, if we went to the architectural ceiling plans, um, this this ceiling in here would be higher than this ceiling here. So the area where you're seeing the hatch is a dropped ceiling, and and you can see why because the dropped ceiling has to accommodate you know the, the exhaust fan ducts and there's there's a bunch of other ductwork coming coming in here as well. So the the heated air getting blown on the windows and so on and so forth. But anyways, for the purpose of what we're looking at today with the balconies and uh, the venting, um, there, there's an example of that. And this one here is an example of uh, in slab duct. So again, it's it's um, dashed in, so it's not very good quality here. But this is the bathroom over here. Okay, right there's the bathroom. So there's an exhaust fan going through the slab and out right there. Here's the this is the um, range right there. So there's the hood fan on the range, and it's going through the slab in this case and going out the underside of of um, the the balcony above basically. And this looks like it must be the uh, must be the dryer, I guess, and it's coming out and going on the underside of the balcony as well. And here's a picture of uh, those in slab ducts coming out at the edge of the slab. That's kind of what they look like. Well, things are under construction, and then of course, you know, then the facade will go on there, and 
there'll be vents there of some sort.